Hi, this is Susan LaFontaine sitting down with the brilliant um, group of women who produced, directed, acted in Life Inside Out. I'm here with director Jill Danyanica, Maggie Beard, producer, co-writer, um, writer, co-producer and actress, and also Tessa Bell, producer. Ladies, it's been almost a year and a lot has happened. 12 nominations and wins uh, since I last met you guys, and I'm thrilled to have you here and just talk about the film, and so let's start. How did this project come about? Um, the project came about because I had an idea to write a movie about, um, I'd gone out with a bunch of women to open mic nights to support each other and perform, and my son sort of went along with us and started writing songs, and. This gave me the idea for the story, and I teamed up with one of my fellow performers from those open mic nights, and we wrote the movie with the intention of making the movie. I had some crazy idea we'd be able to do that, and then Jill Danenica, director, came on board, and Tessa Bell, producer, and we actually ended up being able to make the movie, but that's how it started. How long was the process? It took an, a year and a half for Maggie and Lori to write the script. And then we fund, we kickstarted the film on uh, the month of June 2012. Yeah. And then we started shooting at the end of August for 15 days in August and September 2012. And uh, a year later we were in festivals. That is like the shortest amount and, of time for an indie production. And that's super indie then, I guess. Yeah. Yeah. It seems like forever, four years, you know, from start to now, but uh, it is basically short. <laughs> and it's, it's such a wonderful film, you know, um, bringing a lot of great, you know, performers and directors and actors and everyone together and the story behind it is extremely intricate and delicate and beautiful and poignant uh, and just I remember watching the film and I was like in tears and I, I, I just knew that when I got out of it I had to speak to you and to get this on an interview and I'm so thrilled that it's done so well. Is this based on a personal story? Is it something that you drew from? How did you get this idea? Well, a lot of it is based on true stories. It is my real son, Phineas O'Connell, yes. playing the role of Shane in the movie. And, and terrific. Thank you. And Laurie Nasso, who's my co-writer, is also plays my sister in the movie. But we based a lot of the performances in the open mic nights on real performances that we saw. And a lot of the story of the mother-son connection is real. And there's a lot of real little things. But it is a fictional story, but it was those real life uh, experiences that inspired the story. And that's what I think makes it so rich, because they're inspired by real experiences. Even the tiniest little character in the movie has a, a depth to them, because you actually were able to write with sort of a reference in mind, I think. Well, you know, what, I, what really touched me was that a lot of us go through these transitions in life, and, you know, second act, third act in our lives, and things and changes. And a lot of time we lose perception of certain things in life. Uh, and you get caught up in things, and sometimes you don't know how you get into these webs and how you dig yourself out. And the story is so beautiful in a way that, you know, uh, Laura was going through this whole ordeal and her son was so troubled, and everything was woven together so beautifully in how it came out with the film, you know, to basically letting people know that there is a second chance at life and how you just rediscover yourself and your relationships and dynamic with people. And I, I think it's absolutely phenomenal um, as an actor. For you, was it difficult for you to write this part as well as acting it and co-producing? Um, writing well? it and acting it, it was a blast because the idea of being on a set, saying words that you had written and knowing what everyone, you know, having that kind of familiarity with something was an incredible experience, you know, and knowing what came next and what came before and where the story came from. You know, there was no need to... Exactly. We didn't get a continuity person. Yeah. <laughs> it was me. She knew okay. that. Yeah. that. That's not supposed to be in the shot. Uh, yeah, so I had such a familiarity with everything. And then acting with my son was so easy. You know, it was just so easy. And we were, you know, in our own house for a lot of it, too. So seven of the 15 and a half days we shot in our house. So it would literally be like, you know, here's an extension cord. Oh, rolling. And, and that was really made of, you know, as an actor, so many times you're sitting in your trailer, and then they call you to the set, and your stand-in is there, and you are sort of div you're, you're divorced from the process. The crew is there, and they're all having this wonderful, fun experience, and you, the actor, it's sort of precious. And then you go to act, and, and, and it's easy for it to be false, because 
you've been removed from it. And we didn't have that. There were no trailers. <laughs> Everybody was there. And, and everyone just like multitask and everything to pitch in. Everybody did. Everyone. There was no makeup person. You know, it was like we had some volunteers. So everyone was just very, it made it very real because it was, it was very real. And how was the experience for you as a producer on this project? This is your first indie film, right? No, it's my second. It's your second. It's my second. Um, and I had as much money on this one as I did on the other one. Which is uh, not much. Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> so She's I, I knew budget. what I was yes. in for. I, I really did know what I was in for. You know, it, it's really hard to make a movie with no money at all, but it's also really hard to make a movie with a lot of money. So you kind of trade off on your on your problems. And um, but. I have to say, this is an extraordinary team to work with. The dedication of the team was really phenomenal and very, very, very unique. And you know, having worked on other projects in, in, that last a long time, I'm really grateful because it's impossible to it's, it's impossible to work with people when it's when when the team doesn't function properly. And and we just all had such dedication to this crazy idea that we were going to do this on a dime. And um, and it's really been it's been really hard, but really worthwhile. And I want to say something about the delicacy and the poignancy of the story and all. Um, our director happens to be an editor as well. Yes. And as she has said many, many, many times, women. the editor saved the director. Mm -hmm. And I think what you really have there is this very fascinating combination of a director who is very close to the actor and the writer, because they've known each other for a very, very, very long time. Uh, and yeah. which is really, it's informed, it informed every decision, not only of the writer and the actor, but also the director and the editor. So at every level where they had to make different choices from different positions, they were all that deeply informed about, you know, what, what, the, what the point of the story was. And a good thing too, because this is a very, very small story. So if you're not, if it's not deep, it's really, you know, I mean, we, we risked creating something that just had you know, it was just, there's no boobs, there's no bombs, you know, a lot of stuff, right? So, but in, in fact, what you get character. is that, you know, and we don't get that kind of film, film that often anymore, we really. Because really, it's a small story when you tell the kind of Hollywood version of, like, this is what happens. But when you actually look at theirs, which I am so thrilled that you understood, there's actually so many levels in the right. subplots and right. the characters and everyone's own story. But we didn't. We didn't want to Hollywoodize the main arc. We just wanted everyone to have their true. Well, life. do you think a lot of this has to do with also being such a the core group of women? Um, you've been hearing a lot about this too. I'm sure. I don't think there's enough women directors out there. And how do you feel about this? I mean, do you think that the landscape should change? I don't think it's changed fast <coughs> enough. Oh, no, of course. It's just it's nutty. It's something like. Four percent of the studio films, or seven percent of the studio it's films, crazy. were yeah, crazy, directed by women, and and women don't happen to be a minority in the population. We're half the population, so you would think a few more women are directing films. So yeah, it was really exciting for me to have the opportunity to direct this film and to and to sort of represent. And uh, but isn't it more so the storytelling uh, aspect of it too? The story comes out in a certain way. I don't want to say male directors are a certain way or whatever, but. I think it has so much heart and so much depth, and I think a lot of it has to do with the point from the point of view of a female director. So. Never having been a male director, <laughs> <laughs> no. But no, but I do think it does have to do with my particular personality, probably the way the set was run, and and maybe the way that I envisioned working with my crew. They were so great, you know. I told them in the beginning, I am not paying you enough to abuse you, and even if I was paying you enough, it's not cool to abuse people when they're working. And so let's let's be kind and respectful to each other. Let's have a good time and let's get our work done. And they did. We had such a great environment. And um, and it shows. Yeah. Yeah. And and I have a, I have a huge respect for everybody on the crew and the cast. And so I tried to model that kind of behavior on the set. And and then and everybody else behaved in that way too. It was just lovely. Well, um, we're running out of time, so I just want to wrap this up. Is there like a last word, anything? Where can we find you guys, first of all? And anyone that you need to mention would like to mention quickly, and we'll wrap it up. We're at the Lemley, Pasadena <laughs> Lemley, uh, October 17th to the 23rd.
And we're also in San Diego at the Ultra Stars uh, Theater in Mission Valley and in Elkins, West Virginia at the Elkins 8. You can find all this information out at our website, uh, lifeinsideoutthemovie.com. And uh, Phineas O'Connell, who's the other star of the movie, has a band called The Slightlies, which is a pretty awesome band and has a lot of amazing music. I know a lot of our movie is full of great music, so if you are a fan of music, you'll probably love the movie. You might want to check out that band, too. Or just a fan of cinema in general, great cinema. You definitely should check this out. And you can follow me at Sue Lynn LaFontaine or Monty Bubble NBN News Viewer Web. And hopefully this is an Oscar contender as far as I'm concerned. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you so much. Thank you.